Rose Costello is back out on tour with his old band, The Attractions. They're playing here tonight at the Shepherd's Bush Empire in London, and he's invited us along for a chat after the sound check. One, two, three. Welcome. You've just seen you doing your sound check with your old mates, the Attractions. Why did you decide to reform with the Attractions again? We got together for the same reasons as we did originally, which was uh, for the because of the music. They, they, when we formed the band, it was through auditions, and this time I had the songs already written, and it became obvious who the right people to play them were, and it was the guys. So little by little, we got together, and any old sort of squabbles that we'd had all sort of seemed to get just they didn't seem terribly important anymore. Maybe you just sort of think, well. Music's more important than fighting, you know. So is that why you broke up initially? Mm, we just sort of drifted apart, really. Uh, you know, I wanted to do some different things, and then it just sort of it just sort of drifted. Then I didn't really think one day, oh, I mustn't, don't want to do that anymore. It just sort of happened. You know, others would probably tell it a different way, but uh, that's the way I remember it. And then suddenly it was eight years that we hadn't played together, and it was amazing to me. But I'd been doing a lot of things, and so had they. And I think, in a way, it's great because they bring back. They bring their experience from outside the band, playing with other people. And I've played with other musicians, and I know... I think we listen to each other a bit more than we used to, mm -hmm. which is good. Everyone's matured. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever look back at your old videos? Yeah, I think some of them are very funny. They're hilarious. Yeah. We did some where we hired a, uh, a villa in the south of France. But rather than re really kind of live it up and act like we were in some sort of soap opera fantasy, we were, we were just running around kind of terrorising the local people. I made a few more serious ones. I made one for Veronica, which was pretty good, and one called I Want to Be Loved, which I much prefer the video with the song than the song on its own. I don't like the record very much, but the but there's one that actually improved the record. You've changed your glasses, haven't you? Because you used to have those great Elvis Costello geeky glasses. I wanted to change for a while. I'm not trying to pretend I'm 22 anymore. I'm 40 now. And if, if you just looked exactly the same, just like a slightly aging version of yourself, it, you want to mark the, the difference a little bit, you know. It doesn't, it's just a style thing. Your new single, London's Brilliant Parade. What exactly is London's Brilliant Parade? Well, it's a collection of little stories and little images of London. Uh, both in a dream and in reality and in memory and as it is today. So it's all views of London, like a series of snapshots of London in this song. Why did you decide not to make a video? The dreamier side of London is, is in your imagination, so it has to exist in the listener's mind as much as in mine in writing the song. So I don't really think without a million pounds, and I don't think the record company is going to give me a million pounds, you know, to make the, to make the uh, kind of picture that I'd like to make to accompany it. So I'd rather leave it to the imagination and hope, I think, the fantasy is in the music. You know. You haven't had a top ten hit since 1981. Do the hits matter to you anymore? My record sales have been very consistent in terms of the albums. I think you'll find they're all top ten, or at least top twenty albums. Whereas single success has been much more intermittent. And that, that's fine, you know, occasionally you just hit one that, that just sort of catches everybody's ear all at once. So what kind of audience are you expecting here tonight? It's been quite pleasing to see that there's a mixture. I mean, uh, there's also been uh, quite a lot of younger people who obviously weren't there. When we played in Norwich a few nights ago, we were playing at university. And I was joking with the audience and saying, well, the freshers there, you know, simply weren't born when we played at Norwich the first time. Because they could be 17, and 17 years ago since I played at Norwich the first time. Uh, and that's a great thought, because when I'm Bing Crosby, you know, and I'm going around with my straw hat when I'm 70, they'll only be getting into their middle age. And I hope they'll still be.